Hi, welcome to How to Repair. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to dismantle a Miele washing machine 5740. Not only am I going to be dismantling the machine because it's uneconomical to repair, which I'll explain in a minute, but this will I will show you in the video how to gain access to all the components, the common problems that can occur with this machine, the simple faults in other words, and how to take the components off the machine to replace them. I will also be listing all the good parts on this machine on the website to assist other people in repairing their machines in the future at an affordable price. The reason being is some of these components are ridiculously expensive. The program, the motor, the pump can be a very expensive item to purchase and this makes it uneconomical for some people to repair. So first let me show you the machine working. Now the problem is the bearings have gone as you can hear and the aluminium spider which attaches to the drum that goes through to the shaft that goes through on the bearings has all collapsed and this would need over a couple of hundred pounds worth of parts which just does not make it economic to repair. Uh, and also it had dropped down, the drum had dropped as you can see here and it has cut through the heater. In other words, making the heater unsafe and it was tripping the electricity supply. So I've already isolated the heater and made the two wires safe so I can actually show you the machine all working. So just going to shut the door, turn the machine onto a rinse cycle just so you can see it all working. I've already let the machine go through a whole wash with the belt off uh, to test the program and everything else and the motor. Uh, the reason I took the belt off is because the drum is so bad that if I let it go through a cycle in this condition it would do more damage to other components. So I'm just going to press start on rinse and the machine will go through an initial empty and then it will start filling with water and then the drum will go into its rotational basis. As you can see the machine is filling here and it will take a few minutes to get to the water level, so I'll fast forward this bit for you. As you can see, the water now has come up to the door seal. I was expecting it to come up a little bit higher, but it might do that on a separate program. But I'm quite happy that the machine is all functioning perfectly. And what we're going to do now is cancel the program before it goes into any spin mode. To do this, you just press the start button once, cancel program, press it again. Sorry, I didn't do that quick enough. As soon as you press the cancel button, the machine will go through a normal empty procedure. Now, first things first, the machine has emptied with water. If your machine is still full of water and you need to gain access to the machine, you will need to drain the machine down. This can easily be done, small little flat blade screwdriver, open the pump flap, and then you're able to undo the filter and let the water drain out. Now, if the door will not open because of an electronic fault, you'll notice here there's a little pull cord and this actually opens the door. And as the water level is low on this machine already, I'm able to press this and allow the door to open. So we'll just let this machine drain down and then we're going to take the front panel off the machine. Also, before I take the front panel off and the machine has emptied, if your machine is not emptying of water, you may have a couple of problems. The first problem is you may have a faulty pump or a blocked pump. The next problem is the sump hose that runs from the pump to the bottom of the drum. This sometimes can get clogged with a small baby sock or something like that. And you can also end up with a blockage on the fill box, uh, sorry, the empty box, which is on the side of the machine, which I'll show you later. But if you take the filter out all the way, and because the bearings have collapsed on this machine, you can see that there is a lot of stuff inside here. And if you look down here, and I'll zoom in for you. Okay, I've just brought my torch so you can see. As you can see in the top here, you've got stuff wrapped around the pump. You want to make sure this is all clear and the pump is turning freely. It has, it's a magnetic type pump, so you will feel it clunking around. But with all that clear, the machine would empty perfectly, unless you had a blockage in the sump hose as well. Okay, to dismantle the machine, we're going to have to take the lid off and the front facial panel first, and then I'll take the two side panels off as well to give you a full tour through the machine. 
But as you can see up in the corner here, here is a full list of the common error codes for Miele washing machines. Okay, we need to dismantle the machine. That means the lid has to come off and the front facial panel. But as you can see on the side here, I've put a list of common melee error codes which I've obtained for you. These will point you in the right direction of what component to look for when you have an error code or a fault on the machine. On the back of the machine, again, two T20 screws. Okay, to take the side panel off, you'll notice this is a small plastic cover on either side. Using a small flat blade screwdriver, go down underneath it and just carefully prise up each side, making sure you do not snap the pins. Underneath here, you will find a Torque 20. Undo the two screws and remove them. Or push them in as well, because that moves the plastic catch over to allow you to remove the lid. Before taking the lid off, of course, make sure you disconnect the appliance from the electricity supply. Once you have removed the screws, you will be able to get the lid off. There are a couple of catches at the front here, which will slide out to gain the lid off the machine. Now we're going to take the front panel off the machine. To gain access to the front of the machine, Firstly, bring down the flap, as you will not need this, and it's easier just to pop this out, out of the way. This removes the actual kick strip for the pump. Then we need to remove the plinth. Using a small screwdriver, just go round and unclip the actual panel. This will then come away. Underneath here are a few torque screws, but firstly, we're going to remove the door seal front from the machine. Using a flat blade screwdriver under the spring, prise the spring away and take off the wire band. That's a good component and we'll actually put that on the site. Then you'll notice there is a torque 30 in the middle. This needs to be undone. Then you can just peel the door seal back all the way around and just tuck it inside the machine. Next we need to remove the two screws holding the door lock in place. Torque 20 again. Remove these two screws. Now underneath the machine, depending on the model you've got, you will either find two or four screws. Normally the ones that have two screws on each side, only one of the screws needs undoing. But we'll just undo this. I'm slightly supporting the panel at the moment in case it slides off. Once you've removed the two screws, lift it forward and slide it down and the panel will come away. Okay, before we start going through the machine, taking individual components off, I'm going to take the side panels off so I can give you a quick tour around the machine explaining all the components. Now, the front panel has got one, two, three. On the top, you have one, two, three, and on the back of the machine, you have one, two, three. This applies to both sides, but it may vary from model to model. The side panel then will come off. Do the same on the other side. Okay, we're going to dismantle the machine in the easy components around the machine first, and then we'll go to actually take the drum out the machine. So the first part we're going to take off is the door lock. The wiring comes over the front here. This unclips and can actually come off the actual door, but we'll take the plastic off as well and we'll include this with the door lock. Three wires at the bottom, and that just unplugs, and there we have a good door lock assembly. Next, we're going to remove the heater. Now, there's a little clip here that releases the wiring loom, and all you need to do is press this down, and it will come out of the hole. Now, we'll remove the wiring. Lifting the pin up on the NTC sensor wiring, that will come away. The earth tags on these machines sometimes has got locking mechanisms on the earth. That one doesn't, nor does that one. So all three can come away. 
and we'll also take the one off the drum as well. Now we're able to access the NTC sensor and this is all push fit so all you've got to do is put the grips underneath and pull the NTC sensor back and that is a good NTC sensor. It's not damaged but I believe the heating element is damaged because the bearings collapsed on this machine. So I'm just pulling the element back and now I'll be able to get underneath the seal and I might need to use a different tool for this. I've got a hook here which will just take the seal down and then I can pull the seal towards me and I might need to do that in a few places to release the pressure off the seal from the drum Now I've got it through, I can go round and lift all the sides. They are quite tricky because they're a push fit. I'm not caring too much about the seal on this one because I know for a fact that the element was tripping the electricity, therefore this is not good for selling but someone else will appreciate it. And the reason it's not good for selling, if you look closely here, you can see where the drum has collapsed onto the heating element and cut through it, causing this to have an earth problem. The error codes that may occur with the heating system are F20. And this heater is available new at the website anyway. Although I won't be able to sell this second hand, we do have a replacement part and the link is in the description below to these heaters. Okay, quickly going back to the NTC sensor, I've just checked this and it's also got a number on the NTC sensor. And the NTC sensor on this is 6133511. And I thought I'd quickly just give you the values. So I've just made a test rig of the old harness. And now I'm able to get my two probes onto it correctly. And as you can see, we've got a reading of approximately 1405, and that's at approximately 20 degrees. My fingers have touched it a couple of times, but if I put a lighter on there just to give it a simulation of a bit of heat, you can see the NTC sensor dropping straight away. So this is a good NTC sensor and will be very useful for someone. Okay, the genuine door seal is 0657-9421 or it could be 5710954. It's simple to replace if you need to replace it. Just follow the front part of the video to remove the facial panel. Then you need to undo the hose at the top and that will come away. I'm also going to take the plastic bit off this because someone might want that. I'll just pop that back in. And then all you need to do is use a Torque 20 and they even put a nice groove down the block here so you can actually get your screwdriver in. Undo this completely. That should do us. Put your fingers up, lift the seal, and then you're able to pull this away. And then you'll be able to fit the new door seal on. Just a tip, it's sometimes useful to actually take the concrete blocks off but you may need to support the drum when doing this because it will give you more uh, ease of access getting this over the lip over the actual top so that's a good technique you only need to undo the spring the two bolts on either side and the concrete blocks would come away and there's a joining bar at the top for the concrete so the inner clip is also in good condition and the door seal only needs cleaning up it hasn't been damaged by the drum in any way 
Next, we're going to remove the pump. Now, this part number is 6239562, I believe, but I'll look closely at the identification label in a minute. So the first thing we need to do is take the sump hose off. And I'm just using a pair of grips. Compress the spring down and bring the clip back over. Then we're able to remove the pipe. We might get a bit of water, so I'm just going to put a rag down there to hold it. Next, we need to remove the front Torque 20 screw. And this drops the pump down, as you can see. Put that to one side. The pump can now come over. Uh, still got a little bit of water in there. I'll just remove the electrics. Little clip on the top. And then this just comes out. And I'll put that back on. And then you've got two more clips here. So I just need to adjust my grips. Press that down. And I'll do the one on the other side. And then I'll just ease up the rubber because it's fused slightly onto the plastic. And I should be able to use my hand on the other one. Okay, now we've got to take the other pipe off. And I'm just going to loosen that with my fingers. And then that pipe comes off. Apart from a cleaner, and you can see that the pump has got some debris in from the machine. I will bench test that, but I know that's a very good pump. And the part number which I was saying is... 6239562 and it's a 220 to 240 pump and that is a very good pump for someone and that will save them a small fortune. Next we'll remove the sump hose. Now there's two clips on this sump hose. Uh, that's quite a good idea. Just loosen these right off. Once you've loosened them off just push it back a bit on the one side like that. Do the top one as well. push it back, releases some of the tension. The clip came off there, but I can reassemble that in a second. Nice bit of grips, and you can see the gunk that is in this. I have no idea what that is off. But there we go. Oh, that might be a flap that's on the top. I'll have a close look at that in a minute. That just needs a clean up and that's a good sump hose for someone. I thought I'd quickly show you the ball system inside, but let me just read you the part number. Uh, 05913421 is the sump hose. This is a additional part, which is sold separately normally. And that part number is, is 5632920. But inside you can see a ball. Now I've cleaned this up. It was full of aluminium debris from where the bearings have gone. But the ball just goes in. This then goes into the first clip. And this is why they actually use two clips. One to hold the pump, uh, sorry, the seal on there. And then the other clip just goes over this and holds that in place. And that's basically a siphon system. Um, well, not really a siphon system. The ball floats as the machine's filling, filling with water. This is designed to close the actual sump hose to make sure the soap powder stays inside the actual drum as it's filling and doesn't get washed away. Next, we'll remove the anti-flood device. This is quite simple. Press it down and you twist it one direction or the other. And then once you've twisted it, it should pop up. And there you go. You've got a locking me mechanism on the bottom. And then we can open this flap on the side. I might need to use a small screwdriver. This opens up. And then we can actually unplug the switch. All that's actually inside these is a... Uh, basically a two-way switch. 
it's either active or open and this is attached to the arm and if you look closely in the side you've got a piece of polystyrene and if water gets into the base of the machine that polystyrene floats activating the switch and this has also got a part number written on it 241920 uh, Doubt if that ever fails, but I will put it on the website just in case someone's broken one. I think next we'll take the motor off the washing machine. So I will turn that on the side uh, so you can actually see. But if you look back here, uh, camera's not at the right angle here. Okay, I know the motor is in perfect condition. So rather than cutting this clip here, uh, just in case someone's got a wiring harness problem when replacing the motor. I'm going to cut the wires back so they were able to join it. And now we'll be able to actually undo the bolt on this side first and then we'll go round to the machine to undo the other two bolts to remove the motor. Okay, so 13mm bolt on this side. Make sure you it's quite seized or oh, quite tight these bolts will be. This is the adjustment bolt for the motor. So once you've got the belt on the machine, of course you would tension the motor to take up any slack on the belt. Uh, the belt's not actually that accessible from the back of the machine, like some washing machines, but it is accessible from the side. So this is why you would just put the belt over and then adjust it on the motor. So we'll keep that bolt to one side to put back with the motor and now I'll turn the machine round so you can see. So you have to put my light to give you a bit more light here. Uh, to undo, the belt is still attached to the back of the motor and if you wanted to get your hand down, because the other arm has been undone now, we're able to drop the motor down straight away. Uh, to undo the motor, it's just two bolts on either side and they're 13 mil. Uh, and then be careful when undoing it to make sure you don't slip like I just did because you may cut your hands It's held on with a bolt washer and a nut Again do the other side And there is the motor. Now this motor is uh, part number, I believe, 6947043. Uh, this motor is an extortionate amount of money. Uh, this motor was all working perfectly, as you can see, and I will put that up on the website. Uh, it's got good bearings, I can tell that straight away. Uh, the only thing that you might want to do at a later stage, I know the motor's in good condition, but the carbon brushes on these motors are replaceable. And uh, once every four or five years, you want to inspect them and replace them. To take the belt off, just lean the machine forward, give it a rotation, and of course the belt will come off. And this belt is in pretty good condition. So someone will appreciate that. The numbers on the back have slight, no, they're there. And this belt is a 5PJ1321 uh, Elast. Uh, the Elast means just the manufacturer, I believe. But the 1321 is the length of the belt. And the 5PJ is the amount of ribs the belt has got. And there is also a number on there from Teslet which is 5033550. That belt is in very good condition and I will put this onto the website. The only dirt that's on it, of course, is the carbon brushes from the motor. Next, we're going to move the facial panel, but I'll tell you a little secret. 
This is the second time of filming because I messed up the first time. You're never too old to learn in this life. And I wasn't sure on how to get this facial panel out because I've removed them a few times and I've always damaged the glass. I'm going to show you now the correct way because I've learned the procedure of taking this glass panel out which allows you to remove the whole facial panel correctly. So the first thing you need to do is remove the soap drawer. Pull it out, press the button. Hidden behind here is a Torque 20 screw. Remove this. Next, we need to remove this facial panel. Now, the normal way I've always done it in the past is to drop it down and get underneath there and lever it from the bottom or from the top. And you can see I cracked the panel here, so I'm not going to be able to sell this. But the correct way of doing it is if you go underneath, there are two catch points and there are some clips that you need to remove. I'll try and zoom in on this for you now. Up these holes are two little clips and I'll try and get a better angle for you. It is nearly impossible for me to do this with the camera correct. So I'm just going to lever these clips back and I'll try and get this one out for you. And that is the little clip you need to remove. It holds a pin from stopping the glass dropping down too much. Once you've got those two clips out the way, all you need to do is lever the panel down, just get under the plastic at the top, then the panel will come away all in one piece. This panel would have been in perfect condition if I'd learnt this before. Now you've got two screws, Torque 20, that hold the actual whole panel in place and now you're able to remove the display panel. Then using a flat blade screwdriver down the side here, just prise that out, then the panel will come away, and then we can disconnect the wiring from here, but I'm just going to cut it off, uh, so the people who buy this panel actually have some wiring in case any other wiring damage is done. Uh, you've got a separate board here and there is a fuse behind it to protect the actual uh, machine, which not many people know about. I'm not too sure if it just protects the display or the actual on-off on that side. But I'll reassemble the whole of this after and most probably sell the facial panel with the soap drawer and everything. Now the panel's out, there are two additional screws behind here that keep the actual uh, main part of the facial panel attached to the machine. You need to press the clips down slightly and then the panel will come away. Now I'm going to remove the steel panel because I need to take the program out and the soap box before I can start removing the drum. So there's two screws at the front and then three at the top. Okay, first we'll remove the soap box and we'll also disconnect a few of the hoses that are attached to it. Next we'll remove the soap box and I've cut them off. You've just got one clip to undo slightly on this side. That will come away. Be careful when pulling the valve assembly off that you keep all the pieces together. And the actual switching unit for the soap drawer is got two numbers on it. I believe the part number is 583. 5525. There's an, um, another number on the top which is 31690009 space 20. And then of course you've got the top filling hose and that's a separate component as well. And that is part number 59 59398000. And those are two good parts for someone in the future. 
Now we could take the water valve off, as this is a good point to take the valve off. And I'm just looking how this comes off. Yeah, I think it just drops down, so you just need to... Oh, there's a screw in the back, that's why I couldn't work out. So just undo this screw. And the valve will come down, through and away. And that is a good valve. And again, there's a part number on there, 329. 548 I believe that is the part number uh, it also might be no I think this is the part number 497 1731 and that's the water valve and as I know the machine's working perfectly that's a good valve now we've got the anti-flood device so I'm just going to pull the pipes off this and there's a couple of screws on the back so let me come round this side. To take this off, we need to remove the waste hose. And that's just held on with a clip. And that's all in perfect condition. So that's another useful part for someone. Now you have one torque 20 at the bottom here. Lift the pin up, push it forward slightly, then the whole thing will drop down. Just carefully, this is quite tricky to get out because it's got bits stuck on it all over the place. And that's the anti-flood assembly unit. But this is a component that you want to clean. And this, can I see a part number on here? Yes, this is part number 7076037. Now, normally you would unplug each individual component off the circuit board when replacing the circuit board. But for making the next person that purchases this circuit board, I'm going to leave it in its plastic housing. Okay, to take the circuit board out, I'm actually going to cut the wiring so people can see where the wiring goes. Uh, but normally you would take the circuit board out and unplug each of the terminals and take photographs of where you took them from. So I'm quickly going to chop through this wiring loom. And I'm also going to cut through the feed that comes into the machine at the top here. Then you've got to take off the pressure bowl hose that attaches from the bottom. And now I'm going to undo the screws that hold the board assembly to the steel bar that runs through the middle. And then that will be ready to come away. One at the front there. I think that just pulls up. Uh, I'm not sure. I think there might be one underneath. So I'll just undo this one at the back first. And now I can pull away the whole circuit board. Uh, basically that locks into place. I'll take the steel, steel bar off. But as you can see, the circuit board has all the individual connections at the top. I'm going to leave them on. There's two triacs at the bottom um, and then of course you've got all the other components that go all the way around. There are also some numbers on the circuit board. Uh, the circuit board itself has got an identification label which is 07851882 but this may be the part number for the unprogrammed board. So this machine came off a W 5740 so that circuit board is programmed for this machine now I'm quickly going to take off the suppressor there's just one screw at the back 
There's no point in showing you that. It's straightforward. You can actually see the screw on the other side. Once you've got that lifted up and it comes away and that is a perfectly good suppressor. So I'll just take the wires off this. And there we got a suppressor for someone. Okay, there are two ways to actually take a washing machine drum out on these Mealy cabinets. Firstly, I'd like to tell you they are exceedingly heavy and I just slipped with a spanner and gashed the back of my hand quite badly. So the two ways of doing this, you could undo the plates that hold the suspension units or you could just undo the suspension legs. And what I'm quickly going to do is take off, I've already undone the nuts because my hand was sore to say the least. So you can undo the nuts on each side and take out the suspension legs. I'll quickly do that and then we're going to lift the drum out. Okay, I don't have anyone here to help me so I've got a quicker and easier way. So I normally just thread my strap down through this little gap at the front, run that over, drop it onto the pulley wheel at the back, give myself some slack, I'll do a couple of turns on this, And that is a good lifting point. And my dear friend that I've got at the top here. Is a hoist. And we'll just put that through. making sure my clips are on correctly. Just lift it up slightly and this is where you do need a few people. Then you're able to take out the suspension springs top I'll leave those springs there for the moment hanging down because they don't want to come out and the front ones can come off completely. Now I can lift up the drum. Now I can get the two other springs off. It does make life a lot easier when you have the right tools for the job. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is take off the pressure bowl. There's a little pin here, you just lift it, then you pull this out, and that's the pressure bowl. If you've got a filling problem with the machine, that is what is needed to be cleaned. It fills up with gunk on the inside and causes false readings. Okay, I'm quickly going to take the concrete block off the, um, I don't know if it is concrete or cast, but I'll quickly whip round and take all these off. Now I need to undo the separator. A matter of fact, I'm just going to whip off the drives on the other side because it needs to come off with the suspension anyway. This now allows me to get it with two bolts. and the one block will come away. Rotating the drum over gives me access to the other. That 
makes it a lot lighter. Right, now we've got all the weights off, we've got an outer band that holds the front half of the drum to the back half of the drum. And I'm just going to undo this. And I'm going to take it all the way off. Okay, now that's off. I'm just going to peel the seal down slightly, put my screwdriver underneath and prise it away. And that's the pulley wheel assembly. Now lifting this up slightly and using a rubber hammer Okay, I didn't use my press, I actually used the hammer to knock it out as you saw. And there, there we have the drum, and as you can see the spider is completely collapsed. And if you look around here, you can actually see it's completely disintegrated. This normally happens due to age is one phenomena. And the other one is the type of water and the detergents that are used have corroded the aluminium plate here, which is very well built. It's attached to the drum. You can see the drums being catching on the back of the machine. And this is why it's uneconomical to repair. So I'm going to take my hand down to the local doctors and see if I can get a couple of stitches put in. Uh, thank you very much indeed for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Remember, all the parts that came off of this machine that are recyclable will be sold on the website. And if this video assisted you in any way, you can always support the website by giving it a thumbs up on the YouTube channel, and you can always hit on the Bipolar Beer page. Thanks very much indeed for watching.